Hello, Chameleon Wranglers. Yay. We are on. Let's see. We'll get this all set up. Looks like we got a, uh, a hopping chat going on right now. Ryan, James, Note, Nick's here. Chris, Eliza, Ann, Sherbert. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Don Keish and Annabelle. All right, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday night. We've got uh, Doc. Doc's here. And, uh, oh, Genevieve, hello. And Howard. All right, so the first thing that I want to say is I forgot to talk about in this morning's vlog is that tomorrow we're not going to have uh, – tomorrow is going to be the DIY Chameleon Guys, but it's not going to be – there's not going to be a vlog. We know that James has to leave to go to work, and so what I want to do is I want to uh, replace that time and start the DIY Chameleon Guys at 5 a.m. That's going to be our vlog for the morning. That's going to be our chat because – I want James to be able to stay for the DIY guys as long as he can before he has to go to work. So tomorrow morning, don't uh, you're not going to see a vlog. Usually on Wednesdays, we have a double video morning. And, and I'm not holding out on you guys. I'd love to make <laughs> more and more content. But uh, uh, it's just, I want James to be there. So we're going to, I'm going to, Start at 5 a.m. with the DIY Chameleon guys. We are doing uh, fogging tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the fogger. So for everybody who loves the fogging and has been wanting to know how to do it, uh, we're going to be doing it. Now, hey, Ashley. Uh, I, <laughs> Ashley uh, how do you feel about fake plants for chameleons? Uh, well, offensive barb. Um, I avoid flake plants, and it's more because I prefer real plants, and I feel like that's where I want to go personally. I, I know people have used fake plants for a long time, and I do know that there is a quite a controversy in the community. One corner says fake plants will kill your chameleon. And others say, wait, we've been doing fake plants for decades. And then they go back and forth because then the this side says, well, if you were keeping them with real plants, then your chameleons would live longer. And we start getting into a realm where it's really hard to nail down uh, facts and, uh, and what is true and what is uh, logical extensions of what we believe. So uh, the, uh, the one thing that I will say about uh, fake plants, we have to be careful because there are relatively, excuse me, relatively few fake plants that are really designed for reptiles. And we want to be careful what we put in our, in the cage with our chameleon. Uh, a number of the fake plants that you're going to find at Michael's and such, like these silks, uh, you don't know what inks are used. Uh, they, they were not designed wet and that uh, a chameleon may or may not chew on them. So there's a lot of variables. Uh, the and, and to be honest, the fake plants that Zoomed and Exoterra make, I don't know what kind of testing they went into. I know if they are in UVB for too long, they start breaking down. And that's not good for our environment. Uh, or, I'm sorry. That's not good for our chameleon. Uh, because if the environment breaks them down. So uh, there is a long history of people using fake plants. So I cannot say that I can, uh, that fake plants will kill your chameleon. Um, and if I did say it, I couldn't point to evidence that somebody could say, what are you talking about? So uh, just know that it is uh, very controversial. I cannot, I don't like using fake plants, but then again, I've used them before. And, and if I needed to cover up something, I, I'd put a, a sprig of them, uh, again. Now I, I wouldn't feel good about my veiled chameleon chewing on them and biting them. And so, I mean, I, I'm trying to be fair here and give both sides of the fake plant, uh, our, uh, argument, um, or situation. Uh, but the, <clears throat> so I guess the bottom line is. I don't use them. I would. I prefer not to use them, but I'm also not going to. Uh, if I look at somebody's uh, enclosure and they have fake plants in it, 
uh, that's not going to that's not going to be the first thing that I'm going to say. Oh well, that's got to change. So that's where I stand. I'm sure that was clear as mud. But anyway, I say it like I can. <laughs> so uh, yay! Okay, James is going to try to stick along as possible. And uh, yeah, James is uh, really good. Loves questions, and you can put questions on. Like when you go to the DIY Chameleon guys, if you have a question, uh, because you're going to be watching that at any time, just put the question in the comment section of the video. James and I, we look at that comment section and we can uh, we can give you an answer. If, if not the late next video, we can even put it in the vlog because we, we try to do the DIY Chameleon guys. Uh, we batch it up ahead of time because when we want to, uh, when we, we have to, uh, uh, record that's coordinating our schedules. And so we want to make sure we don't get, uh, don't get, uh, too tight on the schedule. Uh, so we can always record an answer and I'll have James record an answer and I'll put it in the next vlog. So we we've got, we can be timely about it. Let's see. Jamie's asking, do you use grasshoppers as feeders? Best gut load for them. Okay. Absolutely. I love using grasshoppers as feeders. I am careful about the, the ones that are older when they have those spines on the back leg. Uh, I will cut those off because uh, I don't want that being flicked into my chameleon. Uh, but they're great feeders. Uh, they're incredible because uh, they're diurnal. So they come out during the day. And so they're absorbing the things that chameleons, uh, at least closer to what chameleons would eat in the wild. Whereas like crickets, nocturnal, they don't. Uh, as for a best gut load of cricket uh, grasshoppers, I don't know that. Uh, talk to Dean Missimer, uh, the uh, Feed My Chameleon guy. And uh, I think it's feedmychameleon.com, if I remember off the top of my head. And he is the one who is uh, dedicating uh, uh, an, a lot of effort into bringing these more natural chameleon diet items to, uh, uh, to availability. Oh, uh, let's see. I heard silk plants are safe. Well, I guess it depends on what safe is and who said they were safe and what they used to determine that they were safe. Um, I mean, really, it, it, I, I think the testing would be uh, intense and difficult. So someone has to be uh, very uh, dedicated to do actually do a testing that would be worth, uh, worth us saying, okay, they're safe. Upgrade Chameleons asking, do you breed any feeders? Kind of, uh, not seriously. I have a whole bin of Dubia, and if they breed, so be it. But uh, it's it's kind of too cold. I haven't gotten the, the heating thing down. And so I have a subscription of Dubia. I have a subscription of Silkworms. Uh, I have off and on bred Dubia, Superworms, even Crickets. And, uh, but, but the thing is, I could, and especially during the pandemic, I did, but uh, it takes time to breed things and to do it correctly. And uh, right now, I really have to decide what I'm going to spend my time doing, and I've got way too many things to care for. And so I have chosen to get subscriptions so people send them to me every week instead of, uh, and that is expensive. Grant, it absolutely is expensive, but I just don't. I don't have 30, 72 hours in a day, so I've had to make my my decisions. But I absolutely encourage anyone, if you have the time to do it, do it. Read your own feeders. At least one. It's very educational. Uh, set your uh, dubia up. Make them uh, bioactive. And so it's kind of a fun project. And it's not just dubia in a bin, which is boring. Hey, make it bioactive. And if you only have one chameleon, you really don't need to be breeding thousands of them. So have fun with it. So uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, Don, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. That, that that's a that's a high powered super sticker. Thank you, Don. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. All right, James is going to try it for the first time. Yeah, do it. Do it. I I, I recommend it. Derpy is the biggest plant you've... Yeah, there are sometimes that veils just go crazy and they will eat and they will just chow down on all the plants. And it's not for nutritional value. It's not for 
uh, or hydration. It's just something inside of them that, uh, and we don't know what purpose it really serves uh, because it, it hasn't become obvious. Hello, Eduardo. If they can't rip the fake plants apart, shouldn't be an issue. It's when they can, it's an issue. Yeah, the thing is, uh, it, so everybody's going to have their their uh, opinion on uh, where the line is drawn. And the problem I have found is you the the when you find out their the, the plant is breaking down, sometimes that's when a chameleon bites into it. So, you know, it, it's it's not a clear thing, but uh, everybody can. Uh, everybody can figure out where they want to be. My chameleon loves worms that have turned into beetles. Is that crazy or normal? That is crazy, and it's normal. Uh, yeah, you're uh, uh, if you're talking about superworms, mealworms. Uh, they will, yeah, chameleons like all sorts of stuff. Thing about the beetles of superworms is a lot of times people just don't, or the chameleons don't like the taste of them, but the, the some chameleons do. Every chameleon is individual. Oh, James. James, I'll match that Don. <laughs> Thank you very much, James. This is this is a wonderful. Okay. You guys go at it. I love the gla gladiator fight. <laughs> Thank you very much, James. I appreciate it. Um Jitsu James is here. Hello, Bill and everyone. Sorry I'm late, busy cooking a late dinner. That is a valid excuse for coming we appre we uh we approve of good dinners where can i get silkworms and do they come with food to grow like hornworms by the way my chameleon is seven months old and i've not seen him drink i fog big time okay ken uh silkworms you can get them from uh let's see uh a &R bugs fram scams there's a number of uh places that will um provide silkworms and a lot of the feeder companies will do that as well and they do not, they only come with a little bit of food usually, but you can order more food. And I like doing that, by the way. I actually have a cocoon, a silkworm cocoon, silk moth. Hopefully it'll come out. Uh, and that's kind of fun. Let's see. Chameleon, seven months old, have not seen him drink. I fog big time. Well, fog and I'll hydrate him. As long as his poop is nice and uh, hydrated, you got it. Hey. Let's see. We'll go. Thank you very much, Eric. Appreciate the support here. Mm. Uh, all right. God's a choke. <laughs> We're glad you're here. We're glad everybody's here, each one of you. It's uh, really cool having a community like this. See, Jamie over on Instagram is saying, thinking of going bioactive. Any tips? Uh, yeah, uh, just start and go slow. Uh, there's a number of videos that I've got that you can talk uh, about bioactive and just uh, go slow. But the uh, the one thing, you know, uh, you, you're talking about a huge topic here. So I will pick one thing that I will give as a tip for someone starting with bioactive is... Uh, uh, um, be cognizant of your light levels. Uh, usually we chameleon people, we start with, we have a two by two by four foot tall cage. If we give enough pl uh, plant density so our chameleon's happy, well, then we block off all light from the bottom. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, watch your light levels. Hey, feed my chameleon. Is like, I, hey, Dean, we talked about grasshoppers and we talked about you. Everybody, whenever, you know, when I talked about uh, the guy to talk to you about grasshoppers, that's a feed my chameleon. Oh, hey, Dean, if you want to put in there, the question was, what should I gut load my grasshoppers with? And so uh, if you want to put down the, uh, a response, I'll read it off for everybody. Let's see. My veiled isn't the biggest plant eater, which is why I asked. Uh, okay, you asked about the uh, the fake plants. Uh, well, that's I try to I use um, uh, uh, real plants even without uh, even outside of the eating issue. Most of my chameleons do not eat plants, and it's just uh, uh, humidity and another growing thing in the uh, the environment. 
So, uh, <laughs> Gonzo Choke is matching the ten dollars. Thank you, Gonzo Choke. You guys are you guys, you guys are having a great game. I appreciate i I appreciate you using me as your uh, your game board. Uh, okay. I am bioactive. Roxanne is bioactive. That's a, that, that could be a good Imagine Dragons song. Let's see. Okay, Feed My Chameleon says for uh, the, uh, the, the uh, gut load. Dandelion is king. So, Eduardo is asking, hey, Bill, how are the Shamrock Chameleons doing? Any advances on the project? Uh, uh, Eduardo, I have a, a, a very solid mating with a very healthy female. And so hopefully I have, um, I have news for you in about three months. Uh, as for the one that mated before, she just doesn't appear gravid, doesn't appear like she's looking for egg laying site, but I, I keep hoping. So uh, she should be laying any time now, but uh, is not showing signs and it doesn't have that marble bag. So maybe she has a healthy amount of eggs. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, I would love very much to give you uh, good news. <laughs> and, and I imagine once that happens, I won't be uh, shy about it. All right. Oh, James got his uh, two by two by four screen cage in. Yeah. How come you order them online? Looks like the package went through the washer and dryer. Oh, okay. So James Cross must've just gotten in a rep breeze. And what happens is the rep breeze, the zoom ed sends these with uh, like 10 of them inside of a big box. Well, the ones on the inside are for retail packaging. They are meant for you to pick up at a store. Well, what people do is they just slap a label on it and they send it through the mail. That is like paper thin cardboard is not meant to go through the mail. And that is why, like, if you order a, uh, a ZoomEd or Exoterra, any of these mass market uh, cages, the people sending them to you, I guess they get them for so cheap that it is cheaper to replace the ones that get mangled than it is to put real boxes, shipping boxes on them. So that's why. And if you anybody is going to be ordering uh, a a, a rep to breeze through the mail, just be don't don't do it if you're in a hurry because you may have two or three times. Uh, of calling them up and saying it's mangled and they have to send out another one. And of course they send it out in the same condition in a totally inappropriate box for going through the mail. I mean, my box is for the cages I send out like 250 pound test. I, I think that's it. Uh, whatever. The but anyway, we got these thick boxes and even I have uh, shipping damage that I have to replace. But uh, because I mean, you got big boxes, really easy to mang uh, mangle them. So I have a very thick box on mine absolutely paper thin because they're like i said shipping out um they're shipping out the retail packaging it's not shipping packaging so let's see what do you do for drainage okay a pheasant bar what do you mean by drainage uh like what what cage if we're talking about the uh the standard cages like the uh, the reptibreeze or the dragon strand well the dragon strand comes with a drainage tray and for those cages I generally have a drainage tray under it. And that's a tray that goes under the cage, not inside the cage. And you can either leave it the way it is and then just suck the water out with a wet dry vac, or you can just drill a hole in the middle of the drainage tray and have a bucket underneath. And you can get fancy, like, like I was showing on my vlog, I, I installed a drain on here. I mean, it's an official kitchen drain and there's a bucket underneath. And uh, so it's a whole lot of fun. Um, or, you can even get clever and uh, install a bulkhead, like the quarter inch tubing that goes to drip systems in your yard. You can uh, super glue in one of those little, uh, little uh, connectors into the side of a drainage tray and then have a little uh, uh, quarter inch tubing drain coming off. Now you'll never get everything, uh, all the water out of it, but it will prevent it from overflowing. So there's a, uh, there's a number of options. Now, if we're talking about like for the, the enclosure I have behind me, that has a drain in the bottom. And so uh, there is active drainage. And, uh, and the advantage of that is, and uh, 
often in bioactive environments, you have this layer of uh, hydroballs, and then you have the fabric on top of it, and then the, uh, the soil on top of that. But uh, the problem with that is that now you are having to adjust your hydration, your misting, and your fogging, not only to give the chameleon what they need, but also to make sure you don't oversaturate. <laughs> is that redundancy? Uh, you don't saturate the soil and, and flood the soil, which is very easy to do, even if you have that hydroball drainage layer. If you're putting in more water than, uh, than it can handle, boom, you got problems. So I love putting in active drainage drains in any of my uh, bioactive enclosures, like the ones behind me. Da, da, da. Package always looks like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you get a rip to breeze in the mail. That's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get. Bill, I heard you are the admin at Chameleon Enthusiast Facebook page. Can I post on there about the free chameleon with purchase of enclosure? Oh, okay. Uh, what everybody, what uh, uh, Gonzo Cho, James here, is talking about is he is offering a, a free chameleon for anybody who buys a dragon strand or the uh, custom reptile habitats enclosure. And so he's wanting his chameleons to go to a... Uh, a good home. And if you're going to invest in the enclosure, then you're probably going to give your chameleon a good home. So uh, that's what he is talking about. Uh, James, there is a huge, huge, huge problem on Facebook. We cannot, and, and by the way, as far as being an admin of chameleon, I'm kind of a retired admin. I, I stay away from, I'm not part of the the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, decision-making, but uh, there is a huge problem on Facebook. If there's any hint of sales of animals and you're saying free, uh, this is free, it's not sales, that, it doesn't matter. You say anything that has to do with a money amount, even if it's free, I and mean, you can't even have donations, uh, rescues can't even do this. You literally, and if you post anything on Chameleon Enthusiast or anywhere that has any hint of transferring a chameleon to another person, it will be immediately deleted because, and this isn't because everybody is really, really mean. Uh, it's because Facebook literally will shut down the entire site without warning. You do, you, you come back in the middle and you come back in the morning and your site is gone, literally gone, no warning, no communication, and no uh, way of bringing it back. We lost a, a group that had like 30,000 members, disappeared in the middle of the night, no explanation why. We still can't figure out why. And there's nobody to talk to, no way to appeal. And and they've, they've changed some things along the way. So it may not be as bad now, but yeah, James, if you go to Facebook, you, you will find people are so paranoid about anything that could be construed as the sale of animals because you, you lose the entire group you literally it's gone and so uh we we've had to we've had to just get it off as soon as possible you can't even take the time to tell the person about this and warn them and ask them to change sometimes we do if it's like on the edge but i mean really it, it is there's this artificial intelligence that's looking for this stuff. And there are people who literally are running around trying to find groups that they can uh, tattle on to get them shut down. So it's a war zone over on Facebook. And unfortunately, you know, that, that's that's the situation. Uh, I wish it were different, but we can't. Uh, you'd have to be really, really clever as to how to present that. Um and by the way, you can sell cages and stuff like that, just not animals. So we'd have to figure out a creative way to be able to word that so we're not in danger. Um, with many chameleons being territorial, do they mark their territory visually or by scent? They, I do know that they, they defend their territory by being there. And that's why they have the bright colors. They say, get away. I, I am me and you are not. Get out of here. Uh, as for scent, that's a very good question. 
We've all seen a chameleon just sit there and start licking the branch. We don't know why they do this. And could there be some sort of scenting that they do that we don't know about? It's as good of an explanation as any other. And so uh, we are we are still working on the answer to that question. Let's say. <laughs> Every time I've gotten one talking about the uh, Reptibris cage, it looks this way. Always worried it's going to be damaged. And often it is. I had to do mine. I did a video at one point about how many times I had to have the cage sent to me. It's like wonderful. It's like, oh, you want me to uh, to send this back to you? Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. His <laughs> bugs are so heavy. Yes. Yes. We, we may, we do. I got to tell you, packing the cage is a whole development of its own. We figure out how to pack it. So it's uh, the, the most solid piece as possible. And so when we go, when we're putting the dragon strands together, every part of it is deliberate. I mean, you see some of these, like the Reptor breezes, it looks like they're just kind of thrown in there, but uh, <laughs> they're, and, and You'll notice that the dimensions of the dragon strand cage are such that the pieces all fit together. We don't, the, um, yeah, okay, maybe I'm going too much into the weeds, but we, we have the panels. If you wonder why are the panels different uh, dimensions, why are they not just 24 by 24 by 24? Well, too many 24s there. Well, that's because of shipping. And when we want to stack them together, we want them to be as solid of a piece as possible. And if some pieces are sticking out, it's more likely having damage. So, you know, a uh, lot going on behind the scenes. Bill and Honali Guide, it mentions a 15 minute missing session in the AM. Is this still the best practice? 15 minutes. I don't remember doing that. Um, Nate, the whole uh, hydration cycle thing, it, it doesn't, it, it's not like we all of a sudden discover something and then change it. Uh, if the Honelli guide, did I, I may have just been, um, copying somebody else's, like when I do these guides, if I have somebody who has bred them and I am using their method on the guide, I will, on the guide, I will say whose method I'm using. And that may have been their method, uh, but uh, but I'll tell you, Nate, Nate, any of the hydration methods will work. Like the ones I do, I have for the Veiled Chameleon, the Panther Chameleon, Jackson's Chameleon, those will work for the uh, Honelli. And uh, you can just practice the used one with the Jackson's, but don't you don't have to be too caught up in uh, in the differences in, in species and the hydrations. Um, we can use the same hydration method for just about every species that we have in captivity. Uh, let's see. Uh, best way for drainage depends upon the cage that you have. If you have a like a Repta breeze, then just get a get a pan somewhere. I mean, if you want to you want to a specially molded tray, Dragon Strand has the tray that fits the Repta breeze. Um, but you know, small business. <laughs> we mold them ourselves. And so uh, the, there's a little bit of expense that goes with that and, and such. Didn't you have shamrock eggs or I make that up? Uh, Liza and I, I did. Uh, they've been un infertile. So uh, I cannot claim any sort of victory just yet. Oh, asking about a white LED grow light. I don't know, Andrew. I've not seen it. And I don't know we haven't had a way to measure how hard things are on chameleon's eyes. So it's a kind of a, I'm not able to answer that question. Uh, let's see. We are building my Panther chameleon, a bigger cage using a screen and I want to block the back and sides. Is it safe to use window plastic or am I better off using the thicker plastic painters use? Uh, either is fine. Um, what's important is how you attach it. If you use double-sided sticky tape, then it'll last as long as the tape lasts. 
if you're using the thicker plastic and uh, you, I mean, well, okay. So you're talking about thicker plastic. You mean the, the tarp? Yeah. It depends on how you attach it. I mean, you can get Coroplast and just screw it onto the frame and it'll just stay there forever. So any of those methods will work. How long is incubation for the shamrocks? Oh, they have been done. They have done yeah, about 12, 14 months. Uh, so few people have done it that uh, right now, anything that we hear is like anecdotal. So, you know, you don't know until you have a number of people doing it in a number of different conditions. And so uh, that's, that's a challenge with some of these uh, more rare species is you only have a couple of data points to go off of. Bill, bioactive is a process. Tell them. <laughs> bioactive is a process. Yes, it is. It definitely is. And uh, I, I, either Roxanne is talking about a process to get good at it or a literal process is that uh, once you put together the bioactive, then it continues to grow and needing to be tended. Uh, the soil is literally living, not just isopods, but it's always breaking down. And so uh, yeah, you have to tend it. So yeah, the uh, the bioactive is a an art all to its own. And boy, we could really, I, I want to dive deeper into it. And so uh, eventually we will, we will do more and more of diving into bioactive. Oh, hey, <laughs> Nate's really, really got it going. He's going to be uh, making hybrid cages, a lot of hybrid cages. Great to be here. Wondering why it seems there's a lack of chameleon community in Canada versus the U.S. Is it really that cold up here? It is cold up there, but you have a number of, um, you do have a chameleon community up there. It's just spread out across the country. Uh, we just have so many more people here in the United States. So, <laughs> but uh, you have a number of very good chameleon uh, keepers and and breeders up in Canada. And uh, Mikey is Mikey here? Mikey, Mikey Ben, who uh, is here often, is uh, Madushi. He's over there on uh, Instagram. Yeah, he's from Canada. <laughs> Hey, Tarantula Collective, Richard. Richard's here. Hello, Richard. Good to see you. Good to see you. Had my uh, had my white knee, zebra knee coffee this morning. Glenn's Braden, can you answer a question for me? Glenn's Braden, that is exactly what we are here to do. I, I am answering questions. Tuesday night is office hours and we are just talking. Oh, okay. It's a second intermission at the hockey game, and that's why we have uh, Mikey for a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, Fergie, ask your question quick because <laughs> Mikey's got to go back to hockey. If that's not a Canadian, I don't know what is. <laughs> oh, and uh, was never su successful at shrinking it with a hair dryer. Maybe user error, maybe impatient, but either way, it still seals well. Annabelle's talking about the uh, the window insulation. It's like you put the double side sticky tape around the frame and then you put the saran wrap across it and then you go out with a hair dryer and the heat makes the plastic contract. And so it really tightens. And uh, Annabelle, the amount that it tightens depends upon how, I mean, if you put it on really, really tight to begin with, you're not going to see a whole lot of difference. So people will see different things different ways let's see glintz braden i have a chameleon that likes to climb the roof but i am worried about the uv what light should i be using uh glintz braden uh the safest thing to do is to use a uh either a uh, arcadia six percent linear uvb or a zoom ed 5.0 you lift you uh t5 not the cfl T5 linear, you take that linear bulb and you lift it about two to three inches above the top of the uh, screen cage. And I'm assuming you're going to be using a Reptibreeze. That, that screen has a 70% transmission. 
And uh, and uh, if you have a different screen than the Rep Reads or Dragon Strand, then you need to you're going to have a different filtration. But uh, when you have the T5 six percent or 5.0, two to three inches above the top of the screen, then you have UV index of six, and this is all boy UVB. It, it depends on how old the bulb is and all of this stuff. So what I'm talking about right now is just a generalization and average over the life lifespan. So these are very rough numbers, but generally you'll have around six UV index of six at the top of the cage. And then uh, six inches down from the bulb, you, uh, you will have a UV index of three. And that's what you want at the, on the back of your chameleon. So that's best way to do it. You can go to chameleonacademy.com and there's a backslash UVB, talks about UVB. Or you can just go to one of the uh, care guides, like veiled chameleons or panther chameleons, and there will be a little diagram showing the distances and such. So that would be how you use the UVB. Really, the best thing with UVB is you get a solar meter 6.5, then you are able to measure the, uh, the intensity of UVB. This is the best way. So when I start giving you numbers like 6 inches and 12 inches, that is an average over the life of the bulb. So at the beginning of the uh, bulb's life, the the uh, levels are going to be so high. And at the end, they're going to be lower. And it, it just keeps fluctuating all over the place. Having a UVB meter is the absolute best way. And, and there isn't even a close second. It's like I, if it were up to me, I'd have uh, every chameleon come with a solar meter 6.5. Let's see. <laughs> it's because Facebook is mean. Yeah, Facebook is horrible. I mean, really. I mean, they they they, they will cut you off at the knees. Is it normal for juveniles to screen climb when first brought home? Absolutely. Expect it. They will they will explore their environment. And this is one of the reasons why we got to be really careful about what UVB we give to juveniles is because they're going to be uh, having their belly pointed up at the light crawling on the screen the screen top. And so that's why it's so important to uh, be aware of what UVB levels are coming uh, off your uh, off your lamp. Why is one of my Jackson's chameleon leg not working? Oh, AG aquariums, that is a good question and gonna need a whole lot more information. Uh, there's many things that could be, uh, be uh, responsible for that. Um, I am afraid though, it's all going to end up with go to the vet. That if a leg is not working, that's serious stuff. So that is definite reason to get to the vet. Uh, you could post the enclosure free chameleon on the chameleon forum. Yeah. Yeah. yeah chameleon forums is actually friendly towards uh, the chameleon community. So yeah, everybody, I, I recommend going to the chameleon forums. I wish we could take everybody on Facebook and just put them on the chameleon forums. Uh, I, I, I really, I, I know we got to be on Facebook because that's where that's the front lines. That's where people come on. Um, and so I, we've got a team like the team admin team of the chameleon enthusiasts is just, <laughs> they, they have a thankless job and, uh, boy, they need a, they need medals, but, uh, chameleon forms is a lot nicer place to be. So, uh, sounds a choke interested in a free cam purchase and, uh, just a James, uh, well, uh, all I know is you can uh, uh, you can get a, get a hold of Gonzo Choke, who's Jitsu James on Instagram. So, uh, yeah, that's that's where I find him. Send you some pictures of cam I got. Oh yeah, hey Gonzo Choke, yeah. James, you need to send me some pictures of your chameleons so I can include them in one of the vlogs. 
Let's blame Sean on that honey leg. Yeah, actually, we should. Sean's not here, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and blame him because that, you know, what are friends for? Two Turtle Tom, welcome. <laughs> AG Aquarium is asking about a chameleon egg leg not working again. Help. Oh, okay, AG Aquarium, you got to stop doing this. You, you got to go to the vet or else give us more information. Stop saying help. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't give us any more information. Yeah, AG Aquariums, you're going to stop if you, yeah, well, I'm going <laughs> to, okay, we're going to take care of uh, you somewhere or another. Um, got scared to make a post without permission because I got a warning from one page, but didn't want to risk. Yeah, it's, yeah, James, you you wouldn't believe how serious it is. Um, okay, Okay, let's see. <laughs> thank, thank you, Note. <laughs> oh, Bill Both. Okay, okay. I've got to get a hold of um I gotta get uh get catch up on the chat here. Yeah, Mikey, uh favorite Canadian. Greg, hello, Greg. Good to see you. We talked Saturday about our alien female panther. Yes, I remember. Your advice was to get more information. Yeah. Uh, and go from there. Not because it wasn't serious, but because I had no idea what else to do. Sunday vet said vitals good. No renal failure. Okay, that's good. Had blood work done. All right. That's okay. Good. More information. Um. I had a post for you. Yeah. Okay. So, AG Aquariums, you gotta. Um, uh, yes. Uh, you you probably in this case, if we have to do a uh, these uh, these live sessions are good for quick quick answers. Sounds like you need a little bit of investigation, and so definitely go to the Chameleon forums and um, and Eliza Ann is going to be looking out for you. Thank you, Eliza Ann. All right. Uh, Gonzo Choke, could you give uh, uh, contact information? Just put it in the uh, the chat as to how to, for someone, you'd be surprised, everybody, how many people only have YouTube? They don't go on Facebook. They don't go on Instagram. So it, uh, it's kind of an interesting little ecosystem we got here. I have my first female veil. How long before she lays eggs? Uh, number one, she may not lay eggs, uh, assuming that you don't have a male. And uh, she will, if they do have an infertile clutch, it will depend on how quickly she is growing. They could have them as early as five months, and they could never have them. And so the infertile egg is is uh, most likely due to uh, an overabundance of resources, and so the body takes over. And so it just depends on how much you feed her, how warm you keep her and all that. Um, let's see. Nick's back. Picked up 14 Zoomed nano screen enclosures for the upcoming babies. Yeah. You know, those are good for uh, carpet. And uh, I assume you're talking about carpet babies for these. Thinking about turning them into hybrids and planting with grass. Have you worked with grass? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, I have not actually done grass myself. I want to. But, uh, I mean, Michael Nash, he's like the king of <laughs> doing grass. And you can uh, go look at any interview uh, on my YouTube channel that talks with Michael Nash and talks about uh, babies and bioactive. And he'll be talking about the grass uh, that he plants in his uh, cages. Okay. Yay, got an email. Yeah. Hey, everybody, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be uh, 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 doing community episodes probably once a week. And so if you send me your, um, send me your uh, cage, uh, cages, I can review the cages or uh, just show off your chameleon. 
Yeah. Yeah, James just put together a rev to breeze in 10 minutes. Yeah, they are kind of easy when you know what to do. Um, I private messaged a new beginner to recommend you and Chameleon Forums because she was being attacked on Facebook. Facebook's good for attacking people. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, boy. Yes. All right. Yeah, AG's aquariums. It's th this sounds like a vet thing. You got to figure out what's going on. It sounds when one leg is a problem that really points to uh, some sort of physical damage to that leg, and so we're not talking about an internal thing that can be fixed by husbandry. We're talking about it. There was something physically damaging to it, and that would have to be the vet would be the only one who can fix that uh, and figure out now if. After they look at it, they say, okay, this is the problem. Like, say it was a metabolic bone disease and that just happened to be the leg that broke. All right, well, then we can fix uh, the husbandry. Yeah. And Eliza Ann will be waiting for you to give, uh, give more information. Thank you very much, Eliza Ann. That is the kind of support that's wonderful for the community to give. Uh, Mikey's gone. Mikey's gone. Time to get back to hockey. Pup for the fogging episode. <laughs> My debt card is ready. Yeah, I'm waiting for I, I, I'm waiting for the final version. I actually have someone helping me on that one to do some of the editing. So I'm I'm waiting. My six month old veil eats wonderfully. I'm going to go away for a weekend and wondering how long she can go without eating. It's 48 hours too long. She'll be full of silkworms. But no. 45, uh, 48 hours is not too long. And if you just give a, a big, get a feeder run cup, get a feeder cup and put a bunch of uh, feeders in it right before you walk out the door, she likely will go and just pig out on them. And then she will just for 48 hours be sitting back and digesting them. Bill, what's your email? Bill at chameleonacademy.com. So anybody wants to send that, it's bill at chameleonacademy.com. That's how you send it to me. That's the best place. You can also send it to me on Instagram, my Instagram account if you're on Instagram. Uh, yes, thank you, Howard. <laughs> I do need to tell him where to send it. Oh. So, uh, all right, everybody. We are coming to the end of the day. Oh, I got to show. So anybody, I, I everybody, for my... And, and, um, outreach. I am experimenting with micro learning, which means I am going to be trying to put together minute long learning episodes. Cause I know the, uh, the world, excuse me, the world is going towards shorts and reels and short form video. And so I'm going to play with it. I did my first one. I answered uh, today. I answered a question as to, uh, if we can use CFLs instead of, uh, linear bulbs for UVB. And so I'm, it is it is an art to try to get as much as you can in 60 seconds. And it's it's actually challenging. It's kind of fun. And I've done, I mean, anybody who's been with me has known that I've been doing this for many, many years. And so uh, this is my first time working with the shorts, but uh, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to come up with ways I can integrate it with the rest of what I am doing. So we'll, we'll see how it all comes together. But anyway, enjoy the uh, the short out that's about CFLs. And you know what? Let me know. Put comments when you see it. Put comments on it. Let me know what you think. And yes, I know it doesn't say everything. And uh, that's part of the challenge is figuring out how to say as much as possible. What size enclosure do you recommend to put new baby chameleons in for a breeding project? Right now, probably carpets. Uh, Michael Schroeder, you do as, I mean, I make, um, I make nursery cages that are five inches wide and I believe 18 inches tall and 17 inches deep. And those are good to about three months old when, uh, you know, the chameleons are needing to be sold off. Uh, if we are going individually, my, my dream is that everybody would give each baby a 16 by 16 by 30 inch tall 
cage. Now I know that that is um, that is um, <laughs> very difficult for uh, space wise when you have like, but uh, you may be able to do that with carpets. Thing is, if you use a something large like a sixteen by sixteen by thirty, you can keep them in for their entire life. Uh, so, but uh, but as for um, what they need. You can, uh, I, I think, putting them in the five inch by eighteen inch by seventeen inch, that seventeen inch deep, so five by seventeen by eighteen, that would be fine. Yeah, carpet chameleons are much smaller. The thing is, when you get to babies, the challenge is not. I mean, you can you can make the enclosure so small, but the problem is, you need to still create an environment. And the cage has to be big enough that you can create an environment within it. So really, the, the size of the baby cages is not on how much space the baby needs. It's on how, can, how well can you create an environment. And in a real small cage, you really can't create microclimates. And you need it big enough for the equipment that you have. And we have very... Um, we, we have large equipment that does really well with two by two by four foot tall cages, but uh, we all keep having to shrink it down and figure out how to diffuse it all for the smaller cages so we don't just blast our poor little babies. Why do chameleons always have its tail coiled? Uh, that's, uh, it keeps it out of the way. They use their tail to help them navigate through the trees when it's, uh, they don't want to navigate through the trees. Coiling it up keeps it out of the way and keeps it from getting caught. Uh, other things being able to uh, bite it and go after them. And, uh, oh, by the way, everybody, before anybody uh, goes, remember, tomorrow morning, we are not having a vlog and then a DIY chameleon guides. We are just going straight into DIY chameleon guides because I want James to be able to be with us in the chat for as long as possible. So, you need to have Dragon's Embrace written into a soft metal ballad and played by, oh my gosh. Oh, Troy, you, <laughs> Troy is talking about episode 79 of the, what was then Chameleon Breeder podcast, now it's Chameleon Academy podcast, and that is the episode that I did on uh, losing your chameleon and it was i mean first time that i've seen i was just, we just need to talk about uh, our emotions when losing a reptile and uh so i actually included in a uh, a poem that i wrote for my chameleons and that wow wow i that, that is so cool that somebody actually remembers it that was from so long ago man that must have been 2017 so anyway troy i'm glad i'm glad you enjoyed that you i'm glad it meant something to you enough that you remembered very cool uh, let's see bill will you consider building ds enclosures for that site from oh eliza ann oh <laughs> Um, you, you will see very soon. You will see very soon. That's, I mean, that's exactly what I'm, I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm still playing around with the bush style of enclosure for it to be similar to where they hang out on the daily. Flera are great. Flera are great. All right. See you later, Roxanne. Oh, wow. How? Okay. Okay. What have you found to be the best way to contain soil and excess water in more screen, non-glass enclosures, plastic liners, little bins? Honestly, Gex, I have a drainage tray under the cage and I just put the screen, the, uh, the soil in up against the screen and, uh, you, it, it just holds in this. I, I don't lose soil. Now, if I am having this outside, I do have to put, barriers but that's not to keep the soil in it's to keep the sun from drying out the soil too much but uh the the standard screen will hold in soil easily 
So uh, I would, uh, <laughs> I just, I just put, I just uh, shovel soil into my screen cage. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing fogging tomorrow. 18 by 18 by 24 isn't too big for a baby. Oh, no. If, if you're talking about one baby, yeah, uh, that is absolute. That is wonderful. That is a great size. Now, now, Michael, I assume you're talking about one baby. If you start start talking about groups, then you're talking about a, a husbandry compromise. And and I'm not I'm not even going to start talking about uh, group raising of babies. We, we, we've been doing that for way too long in the community. It's time to and I don't know that you're doing this. So this isn't a I'm not coming at you. But uh, just for everybody, we've been doing group raising of chameleons for so long, and it's not the right way to keep chameleons. We need to keep them individually. That is the future. That is proper husbandry. It's not just, oh, Bill's got a great idea. No, it, objectively speaking, chameleons do not like to be raised together, and we shouldn't be doing it. And if we do it, we shouldn't be pretending like that is proper husbandry. So uh, everybody, when I am talking about baby caging, I am always talking about individually raising unless i specifically say otherwise so michael if you're talking about 18 by 18 by 24 isn't too big for a one baby no no you can put one baby in a 24 by 24 by 48 inch tall cage now i don't necessarily recommend that even though i do that because i'm okay not seeing my baby for three days i know that it's okay uh, but if you're just starting out this is your first baby or first clutch Free, they will rightfully get freaked out not being able to uh, know where their baby is. So that's the uh, <laughs> that's uh, that is my approach. I love the DIY chameleon guys. James rocks, and I love how he can just pull anything he's talking about off his shelf. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> and uh, and he's got donkeys. <laughs> All right. Okay, everybody. Um, we are coming to the end. Oh, we are at the end. I want to say, everybody, thank you so much for joining here. Remember, tomorrow morning at uh, we release the DIY Chameleon Guys at 5 a.m. If you uh, that specific time, if you want to get up that early, a number of us we start our day off with uh, this uh, the, the chameleon the show at 5 a.m. Usually it's a vlog, but on Wednesday it's going to be the DIY chameleon guys, and we're there in the chat, and it's a fun group. We all get up, we all get on the chat at 5 a.m. Pacific. We all complain about how early it is and talk about how nice it is to start the day with some chameleon goodness. And so it's just a nice, I look forward to it. I, I look forward to starting my day. Even if I'm tired, I love starting my day with uh, just touching base with a very cool segment of the chameleon community. And so I invite you to do that as well. If that is too early or you're not able to join us at that time, then the uh, the episode, of course, is available anytime after that on demand. And so it's we are having so much fun uh, uh, here in the Chameleon community with uh, here at the Chameleon Academy. And it's because because of all of you having fun and hanging out in the chat, taking care of each other. Thank you, Eliza. Uh, taking care of AG Aquariums and ushering them, uh, helping him on the chameleon forums. That's what it's about. James helping everybody, anybody who comes and says, uh, wants to know about fogging. That's what this is about. And so, yeah, when I say let's take care of each other, this is what I mean. We're just, I mean, uh, we're just a small little community in a huge ocean, huge digital ocean. And so, I mean, let's just take care of the little group that we've got. That's that. That's all we have to do. And so uh, it's wonderful having you all come and join me here. Um, and let's see. Oh, someone's talking about Europlatus. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Gecko's, Gecko Gambit is talking about uh, doesn't Europlatus want to try high-end carpet chameleons? Uh, yes, wild-caught pairs are difficult. You, they, they sometimes come in pretty rough, um, but yeah, 
I, I can't deny that. I have a, uh, a wild caught female and she's doing great, at least for now. Hopefully she lays eggs, but uh, yeah, they're, they can be tough. So uh, Genevieve says, yes, I've gotten so much help from this community. I'm glad. And I love seeing that people are using the platform here to be good people. That, that really makes it worth it. Thank you, everybody, for making this a fun community to be part of. <sighs> all right. Wish there was another place for all of us to hang out and chat. I, okay. <laughs> yeah. What's very interesting, Eliza, and is this little, this group has just coalesced around like the Chameleon Academy live sessions. And it's like, this doesn't exist. And this wasn't anything that anybody could expect to just happen or to try to make happen. It's just, you know, there's 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 times where something just, just a garden grows up in the middle of nowhere. You don't know why, you don't know how it happened. You just say, all right, you know what? I'm gonna protect this space. And so that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. All right, everybody, thank you very much for joining here. I'm going to uh, get on to take care of some chameleons and I will see you tomorrow at 5 a.m. if you're going to be there with the DIY chameleon guys and uh, have a great evening. See ya.